Hello friends, welcome to GT Science Tutorial. In this video, I am going to explain about the third colligative property that is depression of freezing point. In my previous video, I have already explained about the elevation in boiling point and lowering of vapor pressure. If you haven't watched those videos already, please check the link in the description below. You will find the link of those videos in the description. So in this video, I am going to explain about the depression of freezing point along with the graph and the derivation. So let's start. We know that colligative property is the property of a solution that depends only upon the number of the molecules and in my previous video I have already explained what vapor pressure actually is and what is the boiling point. Vapor pressure means when we heat liquid then obviously those liquid start to form vapor. The pressure of that vapor is called vapor pressure and that can be calculated by using a manometer. Similarly, boiling point is that temperature at which the vapor pressure of the solution is equal to the atmospheric pressure. Let's see over here. Suppose this is a container in which there is water. Okay, there is water molecule. This is water. We can consider any liquid over here and if we heat it, then obviously it will form some vapor and if that vapor gets equal to to the atmospheric pressure then we call it the boiling point but today's topic is about freezing point so what happens if we decrease the temperature if we start to cool it then what will happen these vapors will start to disappear right this vapor will start to disappear and there will be a point when the vapor pressure of the liquid becomes equal to the vapor pressure of the solid form of that liquid and that temperature is called the freezing point. Let me write it over here. Freezing point, freezing point is that temperature at which, freezing point is that temperature at which the vapor pressure of liquid form is equal to the vapor pressure of its solid form solid form so whenever a liquid converts to solid then obviously there will be changes in vapor pressure and if the vapor pressure of the liquid form is equal to the vapor pressure of the solid form then we call that temperature to be the freezing point okay now what what happens if we add solute in it that is non volatile solute non volatile solute then we know that if we add non volatile solute in liquid then it lowers the vapor pressure that is raoult's law right because it blocks the site that is surface site of the uh, liquid then obviously it will block the vapor pressure it will decrease the vapor pressure so if we put non volatile solute in it then there will be lesser number of uh, solute molecules on the surface of it on above it right and if we start to cool it then what will happen then what will happen see uh, let's understand this by an example suppose this is another container and there is water like this but in this particular case suppose there is these molecules i'll tell you what these molecules are suppose the non volatile solute here is sodium chloride nacl if we put sodium chloride in it then obviously there will be changes in the vapor pressure and let us consider plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus plus here plus r sodium ion and minus r cl minus ion then if we decrease its temperature then obviously the molecules will start to come closer these are the water molecules okay there is water molecules everywhere here the charges this plus and minus charges are dispersed throughout the liquid and if we decrease the temperature all of them will try to come closer and we know that 
it will convert into solid only when all the water molecules will come very close right because the intermolecular distance of solid is obviously less than that of liquid the molecules will be closer in solid than in liquid that is to convert it into ice that is in crystal form then obviously the molecules has to come very close but these charges are blocking them so will it freeze at 0 degree celsius no it will not freeze at 0 degree celsius because there will be these charges so to freeze is we to freeze it we have to decrease the temperature right and we have to go in minus temperature then what will happen these charges will be displaced out this will be removed from there this will be moved from there on the surface or anywhere and finally the water molecules will come close enough to form ice okay so let me write it over here when when non volatile solute is added added in liquid liquid the vapor pressure decreases and as a result of that and as a result of that the freezing freezing point of the solution solution is less than the pure solvent so you need to remember this much okay this all happens because of the vapor pressure i have already explained you why it happens but in examination you can write this much only okay because of the vapor pressure because if non volatile solute is added then obviously the vapor pressure of the liquid decreases and if we keep cooling it then it freezes below 0 degree celsius that is it converts into ice so at 0 degree celsius that is uh, at that freezing point what can we say there is liquid form as well as the solid form right so we can uh, define this freezing point in that way as well let me write it as that definition as well freezing point freezing point can also be defined as defined as the temperature at which at which the liquid phase the liquid phase and the solid phase solid phase are in equilibrium so this is another definition of freezing point now let's try to understand this with a graph that graph is very important for the examination and by using that graph we'll do the required or necessary derivation of this topic as well as the graph is very important for examination so let's understand how we can make this graph look at here i'll tell you the trick of making this curve making this graph so this is the origin in the in the x axis we consider temperature in the y axis we consider the vapor pressure and draw a straight line like this this straight line represents the solid curve solid curve or solid form okay or you can say sublimation curve as well now from here line 1 line 2 line 3 we draw three lines like this okay and look at here from this point draw a vertical line as well as a horizontal line like this we'll do the same thing over here horizontal line vertical line horizontal line and vertical line okay horizontal line and vertical line so the graph is completed now we need to level it so first of all let's consider this a b c d e f this is g this is h and this is i this curve is for solvent this is for solution one and this is for solution two okay solution one and solution two curve lies below that of the solvent curve now look at here uh, this at this point the curve of solvent and solid curve is coincide right it is intersecting so this point represents the freezing point of the solid sorry solvent so this is tf 
this temperature represents the freezing point of the solvent similarly this pressure p is the vapor pressure at that temperature now here at f you can see over here the solid curve or sublimation curve and the solution one curve are intersecting so this point f that is this represents this represents the freezing point of solution one similarly this represents the freezing point of solution two this is p1 and this is p2 okay so this is our complete diagram so let me write it over here in the graph in the graph look at there uh, b b c what is this b c solid curve or sublimation curve sublimation curve or solid curve similarly what is a b vapor pressure curve of solvent a b is the vapor pressure curve of solvent similarly d f d f is the vapor pressure curve of solution one and in the same way g c g c is the vapor pressure curve of solution two right and in the same way what is this t f t f is the freezing freezing point of solvent t1 freezing point of solution 1 t2 freezing point of solution 2 now in the graph you can see there is a difference between the freezing point of the solvent and that of the solution 1 similarly the freezing point of the solvent and that of solution 2 and this difference is called the depression in freezing point so uh, depression depression in freezing point depression in freezing point of solution 1 is equal to how much tf minus t1 because here the greater value is tf and depression in freezing point of solution 2 is equal to tf minus t2 so we have considered till this much now we need to use a geometry see for very dilute solution the amount of the solute will be very less and these all graphs will now behave as a straight line so there are two triangles this is the first triangle and this one bigger is the second triangle these are similar triangle let me write it and to do that let me erase this portion okay so for for very dilute solution for very dilute solution triangle b b f e b f e and triangle b c h b c h are similar they are similar and obviously we can use the rule of similarity of triangles that is the sides ratio of the sides will be proportional right so if we take this angle then it will be uh, f e by c h f e by c h is equal to n similarly look at here these two angles uh, this is b e and b h so it will be b e by b h now let's put the values over here f e f e means how much look at here there is uh, f there is e that is tf minus t1 tf minus t1 by tf minus t2 is equal to how much will it be p minus p1 p minus p1 by p minus p2 then we can write tf minus t1 by tf minus t2 is equal to p minus p1 by p divide by p minus p2 by p we are dividing the numerator and denominator by p now let's take this whole value this side and this value that side and it will be tf minus t1 by p minus p1 by p is equal to tf minus t2 by p minus p2 by p we get this form now to do the further calculation let me draw this portion and look at there in this expression 
in the left hand side and right hand side most of the things are same there is tf tf t1 t2 number is changing over here similarly p1 p2 number is changing over there so we can write tf minus ts for the solution by p minus ts by p is actually a constant quantity now we can take this value to that side it will be tf minus ts is equal to constant into p minus ps by p or if we remove this constant we need to put a proportionality sign over here so tf minus ts proportional to p minus ps by p we get this much and this further can be written as del tf that is the depression in freezing point let us consider this to be question number one now from raoul's law from Raoul's law, we can write P minus PS by P is equal to N1 by N2. We have done the similar thing uh, in case of elevation of boiling point as well. Okay. So if you have watched that video, it will be very much easier for you to understand it this much. And this can be written as W1 by M1 by W2 by M2. Right. So it will be P minus PS by P is equal to w1 by sorry w1 m2 by w2 m1 if we consider if we consider sorry if we have a given solute then the uh, molecular weight of the solute that is m2 will be a constant quantity so if we remove it there will be a proportionality sign so it will be p minus ps by p proportional to w1 by w2 into m1 let us consider this to be equation number two now we can equate equation number one and two look at here in equation number one in left hand side there is del t f and proportionality sign there will be w1 by w2 into m1 and if, if we remove this proportionality sign then we have to put a constant over here and that constant is k f w1 by w2 into m1 so what is the meaning of this k f Kf is called molal depression constant, molal depression constant or molecular depression constant or depression constant and sometimes it is called cryoscopic constant cryoscopic constant so this is our required expression and by using this expression we can calculate the value of m1 as well that is the molecular weight of the solute as well to do that we need the depression in freezing point and this cryoscopic constant now what is the meaning of this cryoscopic constant to see the meaning look at here this w1 by m1 so this expression can be written as kf into w1 by m1 means n1 by w2 right this is another expression that we can derive in examination as well if we put n1 is equal to one mole and w2 is equal to one kg then what can we say del t f will be equal to k f that is uh, the cryoscopic constant or the molar depression constant is equal to the freezing uh, sorry the depression in freezing point when one mole of solute is dissolved in one kg of the solvent so this is the meaning of the cryoscopic constant in this video we understood what uh, depression in freezing point actually is we understood the graph of this depression in freezing point topic and we saw the calculation as well that's all in this video i hope you understood everything about this video if you like the video please share this video as much as you can and thank you for watching the video